So my name is Tom Panetta. I'm from Lewis Board of Public Works. I live at 125 South Washington Avenue in Lewis. And I'm here to speak on behalf of the uh, Board of Public Works interest in the project. So um, we want to go on record as opposing the zoning change. And um, I think as everyone realizes, the five wells for the city of Lewis are located directly diagonally across the street. <clears throat> this project, along with the existing medical office building, the village center, the cottages at the villages, and 37 more acres sit directly over our wellhead protection area. So we have grave concerns. and. We've been in front of Sussex County Planning and Zoning before when the larger uh, shopping center was proposed to be developed. So um, all of the water for Lewis and the service territory comes from those five wells. They were put there in the late 50s, early 60s. And as we've been told by DENREC, we were very lucky by our forefathers because it is one of the ideal locations for the aquifer. We've been searching for redundant sites, and we can't find a better site than where those five wells are. <clears throat> the last study that was done on the wellhead protection area was done in 2003. Since that time, um, we've had an increase in the pumping rate of 25% from 400 to 500 million gallons um, a year. The pumping is currently still within the permits, but not only has Lewis increased its pumping, but the surrounding wells also have. So we have concerns, and we're talking with um, the geotechs and DENREC about is the wellhead protection area actually even sufficient as it is? But regardless, this property and the other properties I mentioned cover approximately one-third, one-quarter of our wellhead protection area. <clears throat> um, I think as, um, so just for a reference, our wells draw from approximately 85 to 100 feet deep because so, that's where the aquifer is. So they're not very deep and putting stormwater infiltration ponds directly on top of the wellhead, in, within the wellhead protection area adjacent to our wells does not give us a lot of time to recover if something spills, let alone from the fact that all of the nutrients from the landscaping and all of the surface contamination from the roads is going to be sent to the stormwater ponds. Um, I, I know Mr. Lardner said that 44% uh, of the property was uh, pervious or impervious. I, I couldn't see that when I was looking at the, the, the plot maps. However, I find it a little hard to believe that given the density, the roads, the walkways, the tennis courts, the pools, that that really can only be 44%. So I, I have a question on that one, uh, but I can't give you a definitive answer. Well, that sounds like a math problem to me. I mean, that, that, that should be something that could be determined with a, a little bit of geometry, couldn't it? Oh, correct. I said, when, when I was going through and from your packets, these are not uh, CAD CAM designs. They're not something I was able to, to, to validate. And okay. I. So um, I also spoke at the PLUS meeting. One of the things that came back in the PLUS report to the county was that the pavement should be pervious. <clears throat> it's shown as conventional hot mix. Um, I know Mr. Lardner mentioned that they were using perforated drains. Um, this is the first I've heard of that. And frankly, from a technology perspective, I'm not fully versed in it. I have something I have to research. But 
the the use of pervious pavement has um, would greatly uh, or yeah pervious pavement would greatly reduce the amount of water going to the stormwater ponds. <coughs> the, the plus report also mentioned using rain gardens, filter strips, other best practices, and I didn't see any of that in the plans. <coughs> um, as I think you're all well aware, Sussex County, the City of Lewis, and the Board of Public Works have already bought the Jones Farm because of our concern for protecting the wellheads. We spent collectively $6 million, so we put our money where our mouth is to buy that land. And now the remaining part of the wellhead protection area is in danger of being developed. Um, I mentioned about the fact that uh, this is a cumulative issue. It's not just this one development. And that's why it's such grave concern. You probably could address some of it, but the fact that we're doing it by individual basis means that you have to look at it holistically. Um, one other question, one other thing statement is that uh, the Blues Board of Public Works has not issued a readiness to serve for the electric for this property. That is still um, an open issue. <clears throat> um, so I guess my closing comment is without a master plan, a holistic overview of all the lands on King's Highway, uh, we're, we're going we're to suffer death by a thousand cuts to the wells, and that jeopardizes everyone in Lewis and all of our service territory. Thank you. So let me ask you a question before you go. Just so I understand sure. your comment about the electricity. Um, is this your service area or? Well, I mean, the, the property is outside of the city of Lewis. Right. Um, it is currently split. Half of it is in our CPCN, half of it is not. Right. However, by our charter and the city of Lewis's charter, the city of Lewis has to agree to any service outside of the city limits. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and last comment is uh, the city of Lewis uh, apologizes. They have a mayor and city council meeting going on concurrently. That includes the staff. Okay. So they are not here, but they will be submitting a formal letter to planning and zoning. Um, for that. Well, it, well I still have to have a record before county council, so unless the commission holds yeah. a record open, yeah. it would okay. go on the council. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. do, uh, do you have any suggestions of what would make this better as far as wellhead protection? <sighs> Frankly, an individual project, well, first of all, moving the stormwater pond out of the wellhead protection area. Okay. I mean, it is, it is located in the worst possible location on this plot because if you look at the lower corner, that's all the wellhead protection area. That's the closest per the 2003 study to the wellheads. So moving it someplace else would be better. However, the soils in that entire parcel, even though it's not in the wellhead protection, are all part of the excellent recharge area, and that's why we're having additional studies done to look at um, what, what the real impact is on our wells. And it's not only our wells, there are private wells in the area also. <clears throat> so that, that's, you know, but, but the, the, the big thing is, you know, you've got uh, the cottages at the village, which unfortunately is not on the agenda tonight which is totally in the wellhead protection area. <clears throat> um, and then there's the 37 acres further down. Without looking at these things holistically, um, it's, it's going to be difficult. 
I, 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 I wish I could give you some, some more firm guidance, but, you know, when you look at things through a microscope, you miss the big picture. Can I ask a follow-up question to that? I sure. Mean, just, it's not one about the science, but it's one about the significance you've placed on it. If, if the wellheads and the wellhead protection areas were so important to Lewis, how come Lewis didn't just annex everything around there? I mean, the city does not have the right to annex. The, the applicant has to, or the, you know, the owner has to apply. And I can't speak for the city of Lewis, but I think they would be more than willing to, you know, to well, entertain I mean, that. Like, you know, now that it's too little, too late. But at some point. <laughs> Those wells have been there, like you said, for 50 years. I just question why in the history of the wells, somebody didn't have the foresight to get them, since they are so close to Lewis, within the Lewis boundaries. I, Ms. Robertson, I, I agree with you. And you know, th there's a lot of things. You know, I said our forefathers did great on the location of the wells. Our forefathers probably didn't do good when they drew the boundaries of the city of Lewis back when that was all done. Yeah. But we're left with what we have. In fairness to, to uh, your forefathers, 50 years ago, this was pretty far out of town. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah you know, and there's a, there's I mean, a, I, I, don't, I don't want to be too hard on them. I mean, you know, that thing. No, it's just, change. well, the, the, you know, there was. I, but, I, but it's a fair statement. And um, the question I, I have, maybe, maybe for Mr. Whitehouse, is if you could re refresh my memory anyway uh, um, on what our what our code says, what our ordinance says about wellhead protection area. What is what is our responsibility there? So it's in Chapter 89, and it, it's more focused on on the site plan review right. than it is necessarily on the use. But in any wellhead protection area where there is less than 35% impervious cover, there's no requirement at all. But when you exceed 35% and you're up to potentially 60% impervious cover, there's a requirement that an environmental assessment is submitted that, that has the appropriate level of detail about how that's to be managed. So it, it doesn't absolutely prohibit the ability to develop within that 35% to 60% range, but it does require supporting technical analysis. That's, that's primarily looked at as part of any site plan review as to where physically buildings and structures are located. Okay. And the, um, the existence or location of the stormwater pond, are there instances that you're aware of where there, that has been a problem for a, for, for a municipal water system? I mean, is it, I mean, I know a lot of times we, we, we're, we're concerned that something might be a problem. Well, one of the best indicators of that is, has it been a problem somewhere else? Has it been a problem before? I mean, is this something, and I'm, ask, I'm asking you, and I'll also ask the engineers in the room, too, somebody might know, um, if, you know, and, and is it contamination from contaminants that you think might be leaching into the ground from the stormwater pond? Is that the issue? Yeah, well, and so if you just do a, a, a search, you'll find, you know, this was a major issue with um, dry cleaning operations with trichloroethylene in the ground and contaminating wells. I'm laughing because my family was in the dry cleaning business <laughs> for 70 years. <laughs> I know all about percolorethylene. Actually, it was uh, it's manufacturing operations that use trichloroethylene yeah. for cleaning. Yeah. So, yes, th there, are, there are actually numerous cases of that. Um, th just recently, you're seeing uh, the issue about PFAs. I understand that, but I'm not... I mean, and is your concern is that somehow those chemicals are going to find their way into the stormwater runoff and be collected in this pond? And no. I, you were asking for examples. I was okay. giving you examples. So, okay. um, uh, no. Well, I mean, I know no, that. We're not going to have percolethylene, trichloroethylene. Uh, yeah, that, and that's what I'm saying. I However, uh, there are issues with the contaminants on roadways from right. hydraulic fluid, gasoline dripping, other things dripping from cars, right. which then get, you know, the first rains flush off and wind up in stormwater ponds. Right. Right. 
And you mentioned about um, <coughs> fertilizers from the lawns and so on. It, isn't all that area being tilled now or was recently being tilled and fertilized like nobody's business already? I mean, farming, farming, farming. Yes, and, 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 and it's a valid point, except, uh, you know, one thing is that um, farmers tend to, well, first of all, they tend to apply fertilizer as required yeah. to meet the soil requirements. Well, sure. I mean, they don't want to buy more. They're not going to put any more than they need to. I don't Absolutely. They've got to pay for it. Sure. And, and that's very different than a homeowner who is going to apply, you know, twice a year, Scott's is out there telling you, apply fertilizer. Yeah. And so um, you're, you're talking about, you know, a, a business operation, yeah. and there are farm practices for that versus residential. And I can tell you in areas like the Chesapeake, um, um, Coral Gables, Florida, they are n controlling the amount of fertilizer that can be used even on a residential basis and herbicide. Which I think we can do too, don't we? Can we can't we, we do that through the site, through site plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing that ourselves. Yeah. So that that is something to consider, you know, for yeah. all this area back yeah. here. Sure. Okay. Um, anyone else have any other questions or comments? Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? No. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It was uh, enlightening. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else?